everyone, welcome back to the Sussex Daily News channel version 2. This video, we finally know how Meghan Markle wrecked the royal allure. Let me tell you a story of William, Kate, and Harry. They're the current stars of the royal family. Well, some were stars that chose to leave the party. I think the world was thrilled with Catherine and Prince William's wedding. Because they were young and beautiful, and face it, the whole Middleton family is lovely. We watched Pippa laugh with Prince Harry, and some dreamed of a double match meaning two brothers marrying two sisters. Hey, my grandmother and her sister did that, and they lived in a duplex, so it happens. Then we grew up used to seeing Prince Harry hanging out with Prince William and Catherine, the Duchess of Cambridge, and they had such an easy bantering going between them that we smiled and laughed along with them. They made being royalty look like great fun and they certainly seemed to appreciate their good fortune. Watching young, beautiful, happy royals going about their lives is fun to see, and it seemed as if we couldn't possibly get our fill. All we wanted was for Prince Harry to be so lucky and find a wife who would share his life and love of the royal life with him. We never imagined someone would come along and not like the splendor of being happily married to a real-life prince. We never imagined it at all, so when Meghan came on the scene as Harry's fiance, and then the royals invited her to spend Christmas with them, it was unprecedented. She must be the catch of a lifetime to be so honored. We were intrigued and filled with wonder. Meghan was a beautiful woman, and we loved her as much as Harry did. And then, when the four of them walked to the church on Christmas Day together, the term the Fab Four began, and it fit too. Watching two adorable young beautiful couples in the royal family seemed to be special and fun and such cause for celebration. It was short-lived, but I closed my ears to the rumors and decided I would love Meghan Markle despite a few hiccups along the way. At the wedding, I thought Meghan looked stunned, but she sailed through the many issues with her awful family. The poor girl had a troubled family on her father's side for certain and I plugged my ears and pretended Megan having only one family member attend was okay. Happens all the time, right? Wrong. I knew that. Fast forward to January 2020, when Harry and Megan decided to quit the family business. I had thoroughly had it with those two and their tantrums. I had fallen out of love with the rule-breaking protocol ignorant, not really, they knew, fame-mongering couple who actually thought they were more important than the queen and the heir to the throne. The reason why I pay attention to them now is that they flagrantly bully the royal family. I wanted to make certain people understand who Meghan was, as I discovered along the way just who she was and where she came from. I now am watching a future king and queen hone their skills while raising three adorable kids. And they look happy and full of fun, yes, they have really real jobs to do, and they get to work and don't complain. Whoever thought we would come to appreciate royals who don't complain? We do now. We also love royals who don't sue paparazzi and newspapers a lot, sometimes more than three lawsuits at a time. Who thought we would appreciate the way Prince Philip and Catherine politely walk slightly behind their spouses while not hogging the spotlight? I watch Harry and Meghan the way I watch a car wreck with a sick sort of interest because they are a wreck happening in slow motion. What we thought they would try to get away with, and that's being part-time royals, who would fly private jets to join in on fun royal celebrations, then schlepping off to the US to make money off being royalty, isn't happening. It isn't going their way at all. And so one couple does their job and we love it, and probably appreciate them all the more for being happy and steady whilst doing what they are expected to do. And the other couple who left a good gig is laughable in a tragic sense. Harry has been ruined and won't be readily accepted back into the family, nor will the public accept him back as a full-time working prince anytime soon. Certainly, Meghan has burnt every bridge leading back to the UK, but she is such a fame addict that she would absolutely show up at a royal event if they are so invited, and assuming Harry is still putting up with the non-stop drama. Once the three Cambridge kids, Prince George, Princess Charlotte, and Prince Louis, begin attending boarding schools, playing sports and polo, and then dating, then the world's focus will shift to them. Yes, we will probably notice what Prince William and Catherine are doing, but the younger royals seem to receive the lion's share of our attention. 
Could it be we watch because William and Harry are Diana's kids? Eh, at one time, sure. But I think we're over that now. Our focus has changed, and a lot of what we do, with Megan throwing royalty aside in search of privacy and protection, oh wait, that was their claim, but that was the lie. Harry and Megan left for more money than they could get their hands on as royals, and more fame than they would receive as Prince William's younger brother and his wife. We will stop watching them when the slow-mo car wreck of a show is over, and it will draw them to a close eventually, probably soonish. And then we'll pay full attention to the true royals, to the Cambridges. They make royalty look so royal. So, how will the British royal family change in the coming year? With Prince Harry? As soon as he makes up his mind that he's had enough of this crazy life he's living in California, of all places. Or if Meghan cuts him off. I see him returning to Britain, but in a very subdued manner. I think the one-year review won't go well for Meghan. The royals are already starting to scrub her off their website, as they have considerably diminished the amount of space devoted to her on their this past week. That's not a good sign at all. I see more of that happening to her. Then Megan will be likely stripped of all titles. She's too much of a liability and the royal family cannot be tethered to a woman so universally disliked in the UK. I don't think many like her in the US, but in the UK she really is reviled. Harry is now disliked as well, but he might get to keep his titles. Maybe not, but he will remain an HRH and a prince. I hope he finds his way back to the royals, and before his grandfather passes away. I'm not sure Prince Philip likes Harry any longer, but maybe he'd see him, maybe not. Philip drove away from Sandringham to avoid seeing Harry, so who knows? And Archie? I doubt we'll see much of him at all. I think he'll get to stay with his mom for the majority of the time, until she tires of being a single mom. I just don't pick up on any strong maternal bond with her and Archie. He seems to light up around his father, so I wish Harry would get custody of the boy. But what a mess, since the couple would be living on separate continents. He's going to be a pawn in a public divorce one day. Maybe not next year, so let's kick that down the road even farther. In one year's time, I hope Queen Elizabeth is still monarch, but I fear that she will not be able to withstand Prince Philip's death. We all hope it doesn't happen, and that day cannot be too far off by now. Her husband is almost 100, and while people live that long, and even longer, the odds are stacked against it. I just have a bad feeling that Queen Elizabeth will pass away shortly after her husband dies. She's loved Philip since she was just 13, and I think he is her support and her strength. I hope they are both here to come next year. I'm not going to make predictions on when anyone in the royal family is going to die. Won't. I also don't know where Prince Andrew will be in relation to the whole Epstein case. He'll be very quiet, but will he avoid being named by Maxwell, who will likely spill secrets in a plea deal? We just have to watch and see, so Andrew will be in the background, very much so. I think Prince Charles and Camilla will continue to carry out royal engagements as much as possible, and that means the workload for Prince William and Catherine will increase as well. So much depends upon this dreaded pandemic. Once it's eradicated, then everyone in the family can go back to their normal duties. Until then, they will manage the way most of us have, to a new normal for now. I see either Princess Eugenie or Princess Beatrice falling pregnant and having a baby in the next year. So that would be very happy news. I do not see Catherine the Duchess of Cambridge having any more children, but watching the Cambridge children growing up will be fun. And will Prince George go to boarding school next year? I doubt it. I think he'll stay at home until he's older, and that means times are changing for the ones who are in the direct line of succession. I think that covers the major players in the royal family. I hope they can go back to having all their ceremonies, and that we get to see them on the balcony waving and riding in carriages at Ascot. I guess that I'm hoping for most is that the whole world can push a reset button and go back to the way things were pre-pandemic. The next best thing would be a cure for the virus. Please, may that come to pass. My news today is ended. How do you feel about it? Please let me know in the comment section below and we can discuss together. Thanks, Deanna Eppers on the Quora for this content in my video. And thank you for watching, good night, and see you tomorrow.
Harry and Meghan are giving directions to their difficult life when they discover that the path of the past with the red roses is now gone, what they receive is sadness, disappointment, self they are homeless and have no stable jobs, and since then their jobs are out of control, they are not the same as before.